Good morning and welcome to another Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, the managing partner of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And today, Monday morning, January 7th, 2019, I want to talk about one of my favorite topics. This is a little bit off the field of what we've been doing on Virtual Legality so far, but it is something I want to touch on from time to time, uh, which are rules. Um, And in particular, yesterday I had the opportunity to watch the uh, NFC wildcard playoff game between the Chicago Bears and the Philadelphia Eagles, and my family is from the Chicago area, and so we have some vested interests in that game. Uh, I know my father was uh, not thrilled with the way that game went down, Uh, but even if you don't like sports, and I know a number of you don't and a number of you do, one of the things that's really interesting about them to me is the way rules are written, the way they impact what happens on the field of play, and uh, the way they might be better written in order to get to a product that is more uh, what everybody's expecting, the, the platonic ideal of football or hockey or baseball or whatever it is that you happen to like. Um, And so I do want to have some of these virtual legality episodes where I talk about rules and I talk about how they influence things. I talk about them in the context of sports and I talk about them in the context of video games or board games or other places where you see them uh, because my day-to-day life really is all about rules. I write contracts for a living and I talk about what provisions mean to my clients and what provisions mean to the people that my clients might be negotiating against and really trying to interpret those and how we might best write them in order to uh, really smooth out the relationship five years down the line is is part and parcel to what my job is. So I really like this, and so I like to bring it out into uh, the more pop culture aspects from time to time, which is what this is today. So uh, without further ado, I, I, uh, I hope you like it. Today we're going to talk about a very, very interesting call uh, that was made in the, the Bears and Philadelphia Eagles games. Now, if you're not familiar that much with football, Uh, the basic concept is that you're trying to drive the ball to the other team's end zone. And one of the ways that you can do that is that you can have your quarterback pass the ball beyond the line of scrimmage and have the other player catch it. And as long as the ball doesn't touch the ground, uh, with some other kind of technical rules, um, then you're going to get to advance the ball up to the space where they caught it. Now, one of the things that can happen on one of these plays is that they can catch it and then the defender can strip the ball from the, the player that caught it. And uh, that would be a fumble, and that would, that would allow the ball to be picked up by either team and advanced either way. Um, what happens in the NFL is if the refs uh, get a call wrong, one of the things that can happen is it can be challenged. Uh, and so what happened yesterday, uh, and this is an article from Deadspin called Bears Complete 30-Yard Pass for No Gain as Officials Recover Fumble, which is a, a wonderful headline, um, is that There was a pass that was caught that was initially ruled incomplete and that was later ruled complete and a fumble uh, that nobody picked up. You can see in that picture there uh, that the the ball is just lying there and the official will ultimately pick that up and put it on the line of scrimmage. Um, But uh, and you can see the catch here, which is uh, which is pretty fun and, and why it was initially called incomplete. We're going to talk a little bit about the rule book as to why this is complete this year and wouldn't necessarily have been complete last year, which is another kind of wrinkle as to why the refs missed the call in the first place. Uh, but what wound up happening on this on this call is that because there was no one that picked up the ball, there was no one on Chicago or no one on Philadelphia that picked up the ball, they went into the rule book and interpreted the situation as requiring them to have the call on the field stand, uh, which means essentially whatever they originally called, which in this case was an incomplete pass, uh, should stand because nobody picked up the ball. Obviously, from a kind of platonic ideal standpoint, from what we saw on the field, that doesn't make a lot of sense to fans, to people watching on TV, to me, um, because what you saw was a completion. You saw 30 yards that the Bears gained uh, on the play. Uh, You saw the refs get it wrong. Uh, Then you saw a fumble, nobody pick it up. And then their answer to that was, okay, I guess that 30 yards doesn't happen. And they walk the Bears and Philadelphia Eagles down down the field. And so uh, Deadspin goes on to talk about it a little bit. um, And they have a a reference to a a Twitter site called uh, Football Zebras, uh, which I'm not familiar with, but uh, had some pretty interesting thoughts, um, saying essentially if there's no video evidence of a clear recovery, 
the ruling of incomplete stands, uh, which is a little bit uh, editorializing, as we'll see, because that's not specifically what's in the rule book, but it is very, very close. Uh, there's certainly no uh, disingenuousness there. It's just they've added things like talking about it directly as a completion and an, as a catch, which maybe makes their makes their interpretation a bit stronger uh, than it might otherwise be if we're just reading the rules, which is what we'll do. Um, But it's one of those situations where it's clear to everybody involved that that probably isn't the fair thing that should have happened uh, on this play. Um, So let's take a look at the language and see why it is that it got interpreted in exactly the way that it did. So the first thing we're going to look at is what constitutes a catch and why uh, it was so confusing to the refs yesterday and has been confusing in certain games uh, in the NFL season this year. Uh, So if we look at 813 here, a player who makes a catch may advance the ball, uh, which is great. A forward pass is complete in the field of play uh, if a player who is inbounds secures the ball, uh, touches the ground inbounds with both feet, and then after... He's secured the ball and touches the ground. He does another football move. Now, what's important here, and this is all kind of new concepting for this year. Uh, If I hadn't highlighted it, you would see the the biggest section of C here in red, um, is that they identify one thing that is an act common to the game, a football move, as take an additional step. So it's called the third step rule, as people have been interpreting it in the media or the announcers have been discussing it this year. And essentially it means if you secure the ball, you go one step, two step, three step, that's a catch. Uh, and then whatever happens after that is after the, after the, the catch happens. So if we go back uh, and we look at, uh, at uh, this play, uh, you can see it's one step, two step, three step, and then the ball hasn't been lost, he still has control, then the ball is stripped. So the right call on the field is a completion and then a fumble, Uh, but they called it incomplete on the field of play. So what does that mean to us rule interpreters? It means that we wind up going all the way down to section 15. Scroll with me here. Or uh, rule 15, section uh, 2. So we got a ways to go yet. The NFL rule book, much like uh, America, is very litigious in nature, has a lot of rules to remember. Um, and it might be, frankly, one of the reasons why I like the sport as much as I do, as sad as that might sound. All right. Rule 15, officials and instant replay. Now, we're going to come back to Article 3 because I think that's interesting. But Article 5 talks about reviewable plays. So the replay system will cover the following play situations. Plays involving possession. So that's fumbles and interceptions, just like what we talked about. And plays involving touching of either the ball or the ground. So that's uh, completions of passes or incompletions of passes. Um, Then you get into the language that really came up yesterday during the Chicago-Philadelphia game. And it's this. If an on-field ruling of a dead ball parenthetical, down by contact, out of bounds, or incomplete forward pass. So we've got that right here. We've got an on-field ruling of a dead ball as an incomplete forward pass. That's what they ruled on the field. If it's changed, the ball belongs to the recovering player at the spot of the recovery, and any advance is nullified, which is an odd kind of locution here. And this is one of those interesting things where you can say, the NFL rule book isn't exactly written by lawyers. I'm sure lawyers were involved. This is kind of what we do. We write rules. We write contract provisions. But there's kind of a change in terminology in the middle of this sentence, excuse me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So you've got an on-field ruling of a dead ball, which might be down by contact. So that's, you've got a runner advancing, uh, and they call him down because they think his knee uh, hit the ground, uh, only it wasn't, he wasn't down, uh, that the recovering player gets it at the spot of the recovery and the advance is nullified. So he's not down, but he can't advance the ball. He didn't recover anything if he didn't lose it. Uh, so there's really not a fumble in play. It's the same kind of thing without a bounds. Uh, there's discussion of a fumble. There's concepts of a change in possession here because that's what recovering usually means when we're talking about football. But there's no necessary recovering concept. So what we must be talking about when we're talking about this sentence is If you've got an incomplete forward pass changed, the ball belongs to the recovering player at the spot of the recovery and any advance is nullified, that must mean that the player that 
caught the ball that you incorrectly thought didn't catch the ball as the recovering player for that purpose, and then the advance is nullified. So recovering player meaning essentially the player that has the ball when the call is corrected. Um, and then the, the big the big item here is if the referee does not have clear and obvious visual evidence as to which player recovered the loose ball or that the ball went out of bounds, the ruling on the field will stand. Uh, and that's what happened yesterday. So they called the initial catch incomplete. Then the ball gets placed to the side and the referee picks it up. No team uh, recovers the ball from what they determined uh, was a fumble. And so they held that the ruling on the field will stand. Now, as I said before, that is against everybody's notions of fairness. That's against everybody's concept of what should have happened on the play. Um, But I think what's interesting here is it's not necessarily the only way you could have interpreted the rules. Um, So we're going to look at my Twitter really quickly to just talk about what I talked about uh, when this happened live at about 6 p.m. Eastern uh, yesterday, uh, which is uh, I flagged for uh, the folks on my Twitter feed. So follow me at Hoaglaw and you'll get conversations about law and about video games and about sports rules. So we try to cover all bases uh, on the Hoaglaw Twitter feed uh, where I talk about the rule that we just talked about. And I say, yeah, that needs to be looked at. And I have a simple fix. I, I offer... Uh, The offensive player retaining possession before the fumble shall be adjudged down with the ball at the point of the fumble. Again, just to try to get to a place where we are correctly documenting what we think we saw happen, which is a 30-yard completion followed by a fumble where no one recovered it. So the fumble should just go away and the player should get the 30-yard completion. But the interesting part of this for me is that I I later said uh, in an alternative, you could say that the fumble will just be deemed to not have occurred. And then all other aspects of the play will be reviewed. We'll just pretend that everything that happened there didn't happen. But did we have an incompletion or a completion? And I think that's the right way to think about this play. So if we go back to the rule book, we talk about the ruling on the field uh, standing. But we don't talk about the fact that this was essentially two rulings on the field. So while it looks like one ruling because there is only one ruling if the pass is incomplete, there's actually two. Uh, So if the pass is... Uh, incomplete or complete is the first ruling. And then was there a fumble and was it recovered by anyone is the second ruling. And I think if you divide it that way, psychologically and philosophically, you get to a result even within the bounds of what's written in the rule book that gets you to a place where uh, you get an answer that matches up with our perception of reality of what happened. And that's really the goal of rules of contract provisions is to get parties that are involved in a transaction or in a sporting event or in a video game or in a board game to a place where everybody can agree that that's what should have happened. That's why you have things like house rules when you're playing board games and fixing things that maybe the developers either didn't fully concept out or that you just think are better uh, at your house. So if we're looking at this, I think everybody can agree, okay, that should have been a catch. Um, Why was it interpreted this way? Yes, you can change the language here and say you can change the ruling on the field will stand to something along the lines of the fumble shall not have occurred. The offensive player will get full credit for however far he got before the fumble that didn't occur, uh, didn't occur, uh, and and get people to a place where that happens. But I think that the language of the rules actually already kind of contemplates this, and I want to show you where. If we look up at Article 3 replay reviews, which is just a description of how the replay review process works, uh, again, it's very narrative. It's not legal easy, which is uh, helpful for reading, uh, but maybe not so helpful when we're talking about ambiguities like this, uh, which is another conversation I often have with my clients because a lot of people want simple English and I'm happy to do it for them. But one of the things you have to say is you're going to lose a little bit of that specificity. You're going to lose a little bit of that protection because you're introducing ambiguities. Lawyers don't write the sentences they write just for fun. They write them because you're trying to figure out the five different ways this could be interpreted or the six different things that could happen five years in the future. Uh, so here we, we see the, the pertinent language. Unless the replay review is for a player disqualification, all reviewable aspects of the play may be examined and are subject to reversal. So I think I want to emphasize that. That's very important. All reviewable aspects of the play may be examined and are subject to reversal. So here we have a notion that's presented in this one sentence at the bottom of this Article 3 of Section 15 that divides plays into what are called aspects and then allows each specific aspect to be reversed. So to my mind, I'm looking at that play and saying, okay, 
completion incompletion is an aspect. We can reverse incompletion to completion. Then fumble and recovery is an aspect. So to my eye, I'm looking at these rules and saying, I think that the correct interpretation of what should have happened, even within the language here, because I think this was always the intent, is, okay, was there a completion or incompletion? Okay, there was a completion. That aspect should have been enforced. You can even see if you're watching the game or you're watching a replay of the game from yesterday, Philadelphia had seen the the, the uh, replay of the play. They knew it was a completion. They had actually already walked back the 30 yards before the refs wound up saying essentially that the play that was complete, but there was no recovery, so the call on the field stands. And the the correct answer here would be to divide. Uh, so the call on the field can stand is re- with respect to there was no recovery on the fumble, but it shouldn't stand in respect of whether or not there was an incompletion or completion. Um, and it, it says here, it further says uh, if there's a coach's challenge. So the NFL has a system where the coach can challenge the play and they have to say specifically what, what they want to challenge about the play. It further says uh, that the aspects of the plays can be subject to reversal, even if not identified in a coach's challenge or not the specific reason for a review initiated by a member uh, upstairs of the officiating department. So this paragraph, the sentence really, is designed to say, hey, even if someone doesn't properly notify you, even if we're not using full appellate court procedures and the issue wasn't continued uh, at the trial court level, et cetera, et cetera, we want to get this right. We want to get this sport to a place where people see what happened and, and everything that they think they saw is what we're determining to be uh, happening under the rules. And so to me, this sentence very strongly indicates that the NFL would like that play to be a completion and then to just say, hey, there wasn't a fumble because we couldn't. there was no recovery. So it's possible that when we're talking about this language here where it says if they don't have clear and vis- obvious visual evidence as to which player recovered, the ruling on the field will stand, that it needs a little fix because it's too easy for someone to interpret as requiring what happened in yesterday's game. Uh, but I do think what we had here was an incomplete pass that was a completion. We had a player quote unquote, recover the ball as part of the completion in kind of the same locution as we see in the first sentence, which is a dead ball that is an incomplete forward pass that is changed. The ball belongs to the quote unquote, recovering player, which can only ever be the receiver or whoever caught the ball in that instance, that that player recovered the ball, that ruling on the field should have been changed. And then there's essentially a second play that happens after the fact. Uh, And that should be the way these rules are interpreted. I think that was the way the rules were intended to be interpreted. Again, that's just my own interpretation of another person's interpretation of these rules, which are essentially ambiguous by nature to allow for easy readability. But I think that gets you to a place where you've got uh, a play that is uh, resulting in exactly what people think it should result in. Uh, And the alternative is having a referee pick up a ball, having a play go for 30 yards, and then walking back the other 30 yards and asking the Bears to do it again. And in a game where the Bears wound up losing by one point on a field goal kick that hits the upright and the crossbar, well, those 30 yards might have made all the difference in the world. So it is something that's interesting. It is something that I think is important to the enjoyment of watching sports in general. Uh, It's not important to the world at large, uh, but I think looking at things, looking at rules, looking at the way they can be improved, at how they affect the entertainment we enjoy, and certainly the businesses we run and the contracts we enter into, uh, is part and parcel to uh, to uh, understanding the way society works and the world in which we live. Uh, and so my intent is to talk about these things, to talk about rules on, uh, on virtual legality and on the channel in general. So if you like these, uh, please uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and please leave me comments and feedback. I'm always interested in, in what you all think about what the content of this channel is, whether or not you like it or don't. Obviously, this is, I think, the first direct sports video outside of the... Um, Uh, radio broadcasts that I do uh, with uh, WTKA. Um, And so I'd be interested in in knowing what you thought. And again, you can check out all this and more on my YouTube channel. So please uh, have a great week and thank you so much for watching. (laughs) 